Welcome to Carbohydrates at Vedial Vagaparai. In this video, we are going to see about the structure and reactions of carbohydrates and uh, some problems from JAM question papers. So in this video, you will be studying about carbohydrates, their definitions, classifications, configuration, optical activity, structure and reactions. So first the classification. So carbohydrates are classified into three major class, monosaccharide, disaccharide and polysaccharide. Monosaccharides are those which cannot be hydrolyzed further. They are glucose, fructose, galactose, etc. There are a lot of them. Disaccharides from the name itself we know there are two monosaccharide units. Example, sucrose, lactose and maltose. Polysaccharides from the name itself you know poly means many. So these are carbohydrates which are made up of many monosaccharide units. Example starch, cellulose and glycogen. So coming to the nomenclature. So the fundamental nomenclature of carbohydrates earlier was uh, thought of to be hydrates of carbon because of their empirical formula. Like say for example, C6H12O6 can be written as C6H2O6 times. So that is why initially the name carbohydrate was given. But later on it was found that these carbohydrates are not hydrates of carbon. Rather they are polyhydroxyaldehydes or ketones. So I have put two structures of two monosaccharides as I showed you in the previous slide. Carbohydrates are classified as monosaccharides. So glucose and fructose are two monosaccharides. And these monosaccharides have many OH group. So in case of glucose, we see so many OH group. In case of fructose also, we see a number of hydroxyl group. And that is why they are called as polyhydroxy. And you see here there is a functional group in case of glucose which is an aldehyde and in case of fructose it is a ketone. That is the reason why the IUPAC nomenclature of carbohydrates is polyhydroxy aldehydes or ketones. Now coming to configuration. So configuration as we all know is the way we write the structure of the molecule on paper. So in these two structures the hydroxyl groups are written in a particular pattern. So this way in which the structure is written uh, is uh, denoted by the configuration. So the configuration popularly used in carbohydrates is D or L. Here please note it is capital D capital L and not small d small l or lower cases D or L. This capital D capital L means from the bottom. Actually, the inspiration is from the simplest hydroxy aldehyde, which is glyceraldehyde. And uh, it is seen if the OH is written on the right from bottom, if it is written on the right, then the carbohydrate is given the notation D. So here we have two carbohydrates which are monosaccharides and in both glucose and fructose we have the OH written on the right. So both of them are D con are having D configuration. So this is also D and this is also D. Now going over to the L configuration. The L configuration will be the mirror image of this D sugar. We will see in future slides the L configurations and the comparison between D and L. For now, please remember from bottom, the first OH, if it is written on the right, then you put the notation capital D. Next, optical activity. All of these carbohydrates are optically active in the sense they are having chirality in them and as a result, they can rotate the plane polarized light. So if a carbohydrate rotates the plane polarized light to the right, 
then it is given the notation plus. If it rotates to the left, then it is given the notation minus. In case of these two carbohydrates that I have written, we usually say glucose is also called as dextrose. And fructose is also called as levulose. In the sense, glucose has the capacity to rotate the plane polarized light to the right. That is why it is given a generic name dextrose. Glucose is also called as dextrose. So this dextrorotatory capacity of glucose is uh, the name dextrose is derived from. Earlier, older notations were small d, small l. Instead of plus and minus, uh, the notation was d and l to tell dextro and levorotatory. But nowadays, in order to avoid confusions, the D and L notations are no more given and only plus and minus is the uh, symbol for optical rotation. Then we are also going to see how the presence of multifunctional groups in the same molecule can result in, uh, uh, you know, intramolecular reaction and new molecule formation and then we are all because of this ring forming structure of these carbohydrates we are going to see a set of different type of isomers which are called as epimers and anomers in carbohydrates and then we are we will also learn how to draw the different representation of ring structures and then we will see the reason for the formation of ring structure and what happens due to the formation of ring structure, which is called as muta rotation. And then, as we saw in the previous slide, the classification of carbohydrates, the carbohydrates can also be broadly classified as reducing and non-reducing sugars based on their ability to reduce uh, molecule, reduce reagents. Okay, so now we will see about configuration in a bit uh, detailed way. So here on the left hand side, I have drawn the structure of D glucose and L glucose, which are nothing but the mirror image isomers. So the if you would want to know the definition of an enantiomer uh, and um, how to arrive at the um, how to find out whether the molecule is an enantiomer or not, how to assign RS configuration, you can look at the videos already uploaded on this topic. Here, in this particular case, uh, we have the mirror image isomers and these mirror image isomers are non-superimposable and so they are two different compounds. So D-glucose, remember I told you the bottom OH group, if it is written on the right, it is D. If it is on the left, it is L. We are not bothered about other configurations. Similarly, uh, because D-glucose is a, having, stereoisomer, having stereoisomers, now uh, we would want to see how many chiral carbons are there in this molecule. So if we look deeply, there are four chiral carbons on the six carbon glucose. So there are four chiral carbons. Because there are four chiral carbons, there are four into four, 16 possible isomers for this particular molecule. And here I have listed the D isomers alone. So every D isomer, as we have seen here, the D glucose has a L glucose. Likewise, D tallose has a L tallose. Galactose has L. So all of these sugars have their respective L isomers. So we were, we know now D glucose is one of the many isomers that we see here. So D glucose is not the only isomer. There are 16. So here there are eight different representations into two, which is their mirror images. So you have 16 stereoisomers possible for this particular molecule. So how to find out the number of stereoisomers? Please refer to the uh, videos on them. So in this particular case, it is very significant to, uh, to see that the OH group, which is written on the right on all these sugars. And so 
the name D. And then we see each configuration, each structure has a characteristic name and they are different sugar molecules. Now we will see the relationship between these sugar molecules. So in this uh, particular case, we see uh, D mannose, D glucose and D galactose. Among the eight, I have picked up these three sugars and we see they differ in configuration about only one carbon atom. So here in this case, this carbon atom and this carbon atom are the only place where mannose and glucose are different. So because this is the only place where mannose and glucose are differing in their structure, this relationship is called as C2 epimer. Similarly, we see between glucose and galactose, there is a difference only in the C4 position of glucose and uh, galactose. And because there is difference in only glucose and galactose, this is called as a C4 epimer. So what is an epimer? Epimers are nothing but stereoisomers which differ in configuration at only one carbon atom. So that is the definition of a epimer. So the epimer of glucose is mannose and galactose. Mannose is a C2 epimer and galactose is a C4 epimer. So now we will see another important uh, chemistry of these carbohydrates. As I told you earlier, there is an aldehyde group and there is a hydroxy group. And we must remember five membered and six membered ring are stable rings. So when this first carbon and the fifth carbon combine, okay, the first carbon and the fifth carbon combine, the molecule can form a six membered ring. So this is already five and the oxygen in between could lead to the, this oxygen in between could lead to the formation of the sixth carbon atom. So this ring system, which is involving six elements is actually a stable. So glucose has the capacity to form five membered and six membered rings. That is why the two hydroxyl groups are pointed out. Now the question is what kind of reaction is happening between the aldehyde and hydroxy group? So I would want you to go back to understanding the chemistry of aldehydes and alcohols. So this is a simple nucleophilic addition reaction which you would have studied under aldehydes. So when an aldehyde reacts with an alcohol, it undergoes nucleophilic addition reaction to form a hemiacetal. So here you know pretty well that uh, carbon, carbonyl is having a partial positive charge. This is a partial negative charge. And in case of a hemi, I say R dash O negative and this is H plus. So R dash O negative will go to the carbon atom, sorry, will go to the carbon atom and H plus will go to the hydrogen atom. So this is how a hemiacetal is formed. Similarly, uh, the hemiacetal can be formed with the carbohydrate. So in this case, O will break, the hydrogen will go to the oxygen of the aldehyde and then the O will bond to the carbon atom. So we'll see a better picture on the next slide. So here uh, you can see very clearly the OH, the H will go to this oxygen atom and the oxygen will bond to the carbonyl. So here in this particular structure, we see in this structure, uh, the, the molecule is written in such a way so that you can see how the two groups can interact. So this is the, uh, see, I will mark the carbon. This is the fifth carbon atom. So that is, this is the OH on the fifth carbon atom, the fifth carbon atom and it's OH. And so the oxygen is bonding to the carbonyl carbon and the ring formation happens. And this is a six membered ring. And this six membered ring is uh, looking like a pyran. Pyran is six car, six, uh, uh, sorry, five, uh, six membered ring containing one oxygen atom. So that is why the name glucopyranose. 
in this particular structure there are some things which we must note down so this way of writing the carbohydrate structure was first proposed by emil fischer who is also called as the father of carbohydrate chemistry so this particular structure has a pattern of writing and it was uh, uh, emil fischer who said that if the oh is written on the right then it is called d if it is on if the mirror image has the oh on the left then it is called as l so now Harvard gave a representation to write the six membered ring structure because when you write the ring structure in a fisher notation uh, it may not be that clear and so Harvard came up with a six membered uh, ring structure which can be easily written so for that he used a methodology so the simple methodology is this anything that is on the right is down on the ring anything which is left on the fisher's notation up on the will be up so here uh, let us start see the numbering is already given so i will also number uh, the carbon atoms so that you will understand better so the aldehydic carbon is given number 1 so this carbon in red is the aldehyde carbon number 1 then it is the next, the number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5 and number 6. So now this aldehydic carbon is was earlier an aldehyde. Now, now this is become a chiral carbon. So the carbon which was achiral earlier has become chiral. So this newly formed chiral carbon is called as the anomeric carbon so earlier the aldehyde carbon was achiral now this has become a anomeric carbon so now in this particular case what i would want you people to see is the howard structure has the oh of the aldehyde carbon either or down positions so when is the oh on the up position we know if the oh is on the left if the oh that is newly formed see please i'll mark this portion of the aldehyde alone in the open chain so that you can understand so after the formation of the hemiacetal this is how the structure will look okay this is how the structure of the anomeric carbon will look so the one possibility is the oh is on the right another possibility is the oh on the left because of the cyclization okay so if the oh is on the right what do we see it is down in the ring okay so if it is down in the ring and if it is right it is alpha because it is a new isomer and it is called as an anomer. Okay, the carbon is called as an anomeric carbon. The isomer is called as an anomer. Now, glucose, which you saw in open chain, is now represented both by alpha and beta structure. So, the structure given here has the OH on top in the sense the left hand side, which is the beta position. So that is why you, it is given the notation that beta. And this is resulting in the formation of a hemiacetal. So here we see very nicely using Fisher notation, we can understand how to convert a Fisher notation to a Harvard's notation. So all groups on the right in the Fisher notation will go down and all groups on the left will go up. So the only dispute is the anomeric carbon on cyclization. So on cyclization, the anomeric carbon, if it has the OH on the right, then it is the OH which will be down in a, the Harvard structure. If the OH is on the left, then it will be up in the Harvard structure and it is beta. So this is how we write the Harvard representation. So, but we must remember, in chemistry 
whenever there is a six membered ring formation it is actually a cyclohexane ring aliphatic cy cyclic system it is not a planar system like how haworth has told so it is not originally like this actually the molecule when it is a six membered aliphatic system it will exist in the chair conformer or the boat conformer but the most stable conformer is the uh, chair conformer so if when we are trying to bring about a relationship between fisher haworth and chair conformer of any monosaccharide we know pretty well that whatever is written on the right is down in haworth so if it is down in haworth what would happen to the cyclohexane ring system in cyclohexane ring system please remember you don't use the notation down and up rather you will use the notation axial and equatorial equatorial okay equatorial so when you are talking about axial and equatorial we know pretty well that here the oh is in the up position is in the equatorial position so if the oh is in the down position then it will be there in the axial position you see here so whichever when uh, the same nomenclature follows but when we are talking about a cyclic ring system cyclohexane ring then we say it is a equatorial and a axial carbon axial position so in this case we see it is either equatorial or it is axial so it is a or e and uh, we see there is no change except at the anomeric carbon and this representation wherein the oh is on top or in other words on the Uh, le uh, left hand side then it is called as beta and i would want to add here this chair conformer is one of the two so this is beta so you also have the alpha glucopyranose so in alpha glucopyranose this position the oh will be there and in this position hydrogen will be there and always remember when we draw the cyclohexane ring um the the uh, the e when bulky groups occupy equatorial position there is less steric strain and so when bulkier groups are in the equatorial position that conformer is a stable conformer so when compared to alpha and beta the beta glucose is a stable conformer between the two forms so we will see that in detail next we will see the structure of fructose so when you see the structure of fructose again fructose is a six carbon with the keto group in the second carbon so fructose can form only a five membered ring so because it can form a five membered ring you know the name furanose five membered ring system is furan so the name furanose and again the oh if it is forming on the right it goes down so you see this representation has the alpha representation next what we will see about um the relationship between epimers and anomers so you know uh, what is an epimer usually students get confused so an epimer is something which is different in one carbon atom in the sense other part of the structures remain the same the only difference is only one carbon atom so in this particular in this in this particular example we see the oh of d glucose and the oh of d uh, galactose as i told you the fourth carbon of glucose and galactose are the only ones that are different so the, their relationship is called as they are epimers likewise when glucose cyclizes it also results in two different products one is alpha d glucopyranose another one is beta d glucopyranose so in alpha d glucopyranose you have the oh down in beta d you have the oh up so the newly formed chiral carbon which leads to the formation of another isomer is called as anomer so anomers are also differing in only the anomeric carbon or the newly formed chiral carbon sometimes 
you can call them also as epimers at anomeric carbon. So this ability of alpha glucose to form alpha structure and beta structure uh, is very, very unique in the sense there is in solution, there is an equilibrium between alpha structure, beta structure and the open chain structure. The open chain structure here is not written straight, rather it is written in a cyclic form. And at equilibrium, we see 36% of alpha D glucose uh, is present and beta D glucose, I told you, it's more stable than alpha D and so it is 64%. Why is beta D more stable than alpha D? It is because if you see the cyclohexane ring system of the glucose, you will see all the bulky groups, all the OH groups are in the equatorial position. And so this is a stabler form of glucose when compared to alpha D glucose. And as we all know, they are all optically active. So the isomeric, I'm sorry, the equilibrium uh, structure has an optical rotation of 52.7, whereas the alpha D glucose has a characteristic specific rotation of 112 degree and beta D glucose has a specific rotation of 18.7. And this ability of alpha D and beta D to equilibrate between the open chain structure is called as muta rotation so this capacity of monosaccharides or disaccharides so you uh, one important thing what we must remember is this carbon anomeric carbon okay and if it is having the hydroxyl group that is free then in solution it always exists in equilibrium with the open chain okay so all reactions are dependent on whether this anomeric carbon having its hydroxyl group is available for reaction or not or is available for muta rotation or not accordingly the reactivities will change so now let's uh, see a, a question paper uh, this is jam 2014 question paper and this is actually the structure of uh, the cyclic structure of glucose in equilibrium with the open chain structure of glucose and as i told you this is a cyclohexane ring system and in this ring system we see very clearly the anomeric oh group so this is the anomeric carbon the anomeric oh is in the axial position similarly here you see the anomeric oh is in the equatorial position and all other oh groups all have the same positions so now in this particular structure all the OH groups are in the equatorial position. So this is actually the beta glucose and this is the alpha glucose and this is the open chain. So from the previous question that we have previous understanding of these two, we know 36% and 64. So the ratio of it will give you the answer. Now going over to reducing versus non-reducing sugar. This is also another important, you know, classification of sugars based on their uh, um, capacity to uh, reduce reagents such as Tollens reagent, Benedict's reagent, Felling's reagent. So in the process of reducing, they get oxidized. So here D mannose, as we see here, is having a hemiacetal structure. Here D galactose is also shown as a hemiacetal structure and all of these monosaccharides can form cyclic structure and they are always existing in the equilibrium with their open chain structure so all monosaccharides that have the ability to equilibrate to their open chain structure are said to be reducing sugars so if there is a monosaccharide or a disaccharide or a polysaccharide if it is having its anomeric hydroxyl group free that is very very important it's anomeric oh group should be free so only if it is free it can equilibrate to the aldehyde group or the ketonic group so only then it can form a red it can be called as a reducing sugar so if this anomeric oh group is not available this group is not 
available it is converted into something else or it is forming a reaction with another group then such sugars which do not have their anomeric group available are said to be non reducing sugar one of the classical examples of non reducing sugar is sucrose sucrose is nothing but table sugar so this sugar as you see uh, the, it is made up of glucose and fructose so this six membered ring is glucose and the five membered ring is fructose so we see here the oh of the glucose and the hydrogen of the fructose are locked in position and as a result the, sorry here actually the oh group of the fructose and the oh group of the sucrose are uh, condensed together and form a glycosidic linkage so because it is both the blue arrow mark shows that both of them are anomeric carbon so sucrose is a non reducing sugar in the sense it cannot muta rotate it cannot open there is no possibility of sucrose to form the open chain and so it is a non reducing sugar so similarly you see disaccharides another disaccharide is maltose here in maltose this is the anomeric carbon so it is made up of two alpha d glucose units so this is one anomeric carbon this is another anomeric carbon see this is the place where the reaction happens so the reaction is between the first carbon and the fourth carbon so the glycosidic linkage is called as 1,4 glycosidic linkage so it is between the oh of the first and the oh of the next and uh, this is the fourth one this is the first one okay so this is why it's called as 1,4 glycosidic linkage and uh, in this particular case we see very clearly the oh on the first carbon of this glucose unit is actually the anomeric carbon this is actually the anomeric carbon of the next glucose which has not undergone reaction so this carbon can open into the aldehyde group and that is why maltose is a reducing sugar similarly we see in case of lactose lactose is made is a like saccharide which is made up of galactose and glucose so in case of galactose and glucose again we see uh, the anomeric carbon of the glucose unit is free so though one side the it is occupied on the other side it is free in the sense it can open up and that is the reason why lactose is also a reducing sugar as i told you sucrose is a non reducing sugar because this anomeric carbon and uh, this anomeric carbon both of them are involved in reaction so you you see that um, uh, there is no possibility of sucrose uh, these two rings to open and undergo reaction so sucrose is a non reducing sugar so this is another 2012 jam question so it's a quite easy fundamental question so there are a list of uh, six membered ring howard structures given and uh, the question is which one is the alpha anomer so when we talk about the alpha anomer we know this is uh, glucose so this is the alpha anomer structure wherein uh, the first uh, group or the anomeric carbon has oh on the left and then you see alternate oh groups so in this particular case c is the answer likewise again this is also a fundamental question the c2 epimer of glucose so all of these are fundamental this is a 2018 jam question so uh, very straightforward question which among these is the c2 epimer so there is only one c2 epimer which is mannose so this is the direct answer fructose is not an epimer of glucose okay fructose and glucose are um, isomers uh, functional isomers and galactose is a c4 epimer okay gulose is not an epimer okay again here another question 2012 question wherein uh, the the question is about which is the correct epimeric pair so what is an epimer they differ in the configuration about one carbon atom 
So you can just compare each of these structure with all the other structures and see if they are differing only in one, con one carbon atom. So if you take P and compare Q, we see here the only difference is 1, 2, 3, the third carbon atom between P and Q. Whereas R and S are all different. So the correct answer is P and Q. So you see this, this place. That is the different one. Okay. So this is another reaction based question. So consider the following reaction. This is the reaction that is asked among the following. The compounds whose ozone derivatives will have the same melting point as that of X. So this uh, reaction was also devised by Emil Fischer. And um, um, we know that glucose has two uh, of its uh, isomers, uh, which is one is fructose, another one is the epimer uh, mannose. In all these two structures, whether fructose or mannose, we see the uh, what is marked in blue. Okay, the groups that are there uh, uh, after the the third carbon onwards are all similar. So the only difference you see is in the first two. Okay, when you see the first two, in case of glucose, the OH is on the right. In case of manos, the OH is on the left. And in case of fructose, it is a keto group and an alcohol group. But then, all of these three structures can equilibrate to another structure because, um, yeah, you know, under, under the given conditions, there is a possibility of, um, you know, exchange or isomerism. So, Glucose can, fructose can very easily convert to glucose. Likewise, we see in case of uh, mannose, the first step, they all give their own individual, uh, you know, hydrozones, phenyl hydrozone. Only one, you know, this is a simple, um, you know, reaction of aldehyde with phenyl hydrazine. It's again a nucleophilic addition reaction followed by condensation. So you will get only one product. But then when we add excess of phenylhydrazine, we get a disubstituted product and it is same both for mannose and glucose and also fructose. So why is it same for mannose and fructose is the question. The, here the question is which of them are similar. But then you, I would also want you to answer this. Why is this they are similar? It is because when excess of hydrazine is added, we see that the OH group, and the, um, you know, uh, of uh, mannose reacts quite similar to that of glucose, resulting in the formation of a di um, ozone. Okay. So, here in this particular structure, the question is, consider the following reaction. Among the following, the compounds whose ozone derivative will have the same melting point as that of X is. So, either it should be fructose and mannose. So in this particular structure, uh, structure B is fructose. Then uh, we must also see whether mannose is there. So we see structure C is mannose. So B and C are the answers. The others are not the answers. Okay. Another reaction is given here. In the following reaction, D glucose a product is formed among the following which one will give the same product under identical condition so again here if you see this is actually rough's degradation so shortening of sugar by one carbon length so we know kiliani fisher and rough de degradation are can be done for carbohydrates that is from bigger chain length to shorter chain length and from shorter chain length to bigger chain elongation can also be done using kiliani fisher here, this question is on chain shortening. So, in this first step, the aldehyde reacts with bromine water. Oxidation happens and then it forms an acid. And then peroxide and uh, iron sulfate leads to oxidation and decarboxylation with one carbon less. So, carbon dioxide goes out and so you get a carbohydrate with one carbon less. In case of glucose, the product is D-arabinose. It's a 5 sugar carbohydrate 
and uh, i would want to add when two rough degradation happen it goes to glyceraldehyde so the formation of glyceraldehyde happens uh, uh, which is the first molecule which we use as a reference to give nomenclature for carbohydrates so now the question is which among the following compounds will give the same product so it should we should look out for mannose so glucose and mannose are the carbohydrates which differ in configuration about one carbon atom and they react similarly because you know anyway one of the carbon will go and then the aldehyde will be formed and the rest of the configurations will remain the same so the five membered compound formed from glucose and mannose will be the same so again in this case b is the answer so again this is a simple uh, question tollens test tollens test is also, uh, is also used to validate whether the sugar is a reducing sugar or a non reducing sugar so uh, tollens uh, test is answered by uh, carbohydrates that can have their hemiacetal free uh, whereas it is negative for carbohydrates that do not have their negative sorry that do not have their um uh, you know uh, carb i'm sorry uh, that do not have their aldehyde free so we know mannose and galactose are monosaccharides and so they can equilibrate between the open chain and the cyclic so the open chain aldehyde can undergo oxidation and form acid and reduce tollens reagent whereas sucrose which is a non reducing sugar has both the o Uh, you know as um, anomeric carbons locked in position in glycosidic linkage so as a result sucrose is the non reducing sugar so it's it will not answer tollens test so the other three are reducing sugars and sugar is sucrose is non reducing so it gives negative tollens test the same thing asked uh, in a different way uh, we are given uh, a set of structures and we are asked to find out so we have to look out for the anomeric carbons so the anomeric carbons can be marked okay and then we have to see whether the oh group is free or not so in all these cases the first case this case the oh is free in this case it is converted into ome so it is not available in this case also it is converted into ome and in this case also it is converted into ome but here it is available and of course this is a a keto group which can form aldehyde so this can also be a reducing sugar so the number of reducing sugars is 3 again a similarly related question which was asked in 2021 the functional groups in reducing sugar that test positive with tollens reagent is so we know pretty well it has to be a aldehyde it can be a ketone it should be an hemiacetal and this is an acetal these two are acetals so if it is an acetal it will not undergo reaction so the question is the functional group that test positive so the answer is a b and c i hope you understood uh, the complete concept on carbohydrate thank you